Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Happy Aloha Friday and welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. A lot goes on behind the scenes while we are sorting out how to make our dreams come true. For years, my friend Verlina Johnson had the vision to write a children's book. Uh, her perseverance, flexibility, determination, and skills as an artist paid off. The Adventures of Kai and the Magical Machines book is ready and is projected to be released on December 15, 2018 at Amazon. I had the privilege of reading the final draft of The Adventures of Kai and the Magical Machines book this summer I fell in love with it. This is a very darling story of a young boy, Kai, and uh, his grandfather, Gero, a retired aerospace, enge aerospace engineer. The book is certainly rooted on a lot of imagination, play, and yes, science, which transports its readers to moments of pure bliss and magic. This afternoon, I welcome Verlina and possibly her kind-hearted, fun, and science and math-loving nine-year-old son, Kai, who may choose to join his mommy to Perspectives on Global Justice platform. On that note, welcome to our program, Verlina. Thank you very much for having me on the show, Beatrice. Absolutely. So, Wow, I feel like this aunt, you know, who's expecting the, the birth of this very awaited and wanted baby, new baby, you know, which has been a pure uh, uh, labor of love. So I would like, uh, before we get started, to talk about this beautiful conception you've had uh, uh, so many years ago, to give our viewers a little background about yourself, uh, where are you from, uh, and uh, uh, what is your educational background? Yes, um, as you said, my name is Verlina, and I was actually born in Chicago, Illinois, <clears throat> a long time ago, <laughs> and uh, grew up in Wisconsin, uh, primarily in Madison, uh, but also in Beloit, Wisconsin, uh, in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, I went first to the University of Wisconsin, Platteville, but very early on um, realized that I uh, loved making art. Um, Initially, I was doing just very general art, uh, uh, painting and design and those types of things. But when I was about 22 or 23, I became very interested in sculpture. I transferred from the University of Wisconsin Platteville to the University of Wisconsin Madison, where I began to study sculpture formally, but I also started studying Afro-American studies with an emphasis in art history. Um, and it was there that uh, Professor Frida High Tesfogorgi um, introduced me to sculpture and sort of the power of three-dimensional objects in space. Prior to that time, I had done primarily drawing and painting. Um, then after that, I went to the Art Institute of Chicago where I, after finishing my uh, master's thesis, um, and I got a Master of Fine Arts uh, in sculpture and did uh, multimedia installations and videos and those types of things. And all this while, I was enormously interested in children's books and illustration, mm -hmm. but it's something that I uh, participated in uh, more as one who just purchased books and looked at books um, and just really had such a passion for them. But I really didn't start or become interested uh, in them until a little later. But I moved to California about 15 years ago, first to the um, uh, Bay Area and then to Los Angeles about, and Long Beach about 10 years ago. So I've been here in, in Southern California uh, for about a decade. Right. And you've been doing... Um your day job, but you also been doing work as an artist uh, there. And uh, um, I want to ask you, so then, about this lovely uh, vision that you had about writing children's book. Uh, hopefully, this is the first of many books that you will be writing. But um, when did this really start to um, be like? A project that you said I have to do it, and and why? What what prompted you to get started with this particular project? 
It's, it's really interesting that, that you asked that question because I've been, been thinking about that and, and I do uh, feel very inspired uh, to do it. Uh, my thesis actually, the master's thesis I finished in 1996 was about the artist Faith Ringgold, uh, an African-American artist who used images and text in her work. She started out as a sculptress and then um, also painted, but initially during the 1960s, she used image and text composites together, and eventually her text became more narrative and were less statements, and she would do these amazing and intricate story quilts. And I was very interested in how she used these central panels in her quilts to visually tell stories and then have these narratives about these uh, fictitious characters, and they would have these interactions with modernist artists and other actual historical figures. And so in looking back in terms of where I'm at now producing these books, I often think about how in the mid to late 90s, I was actually interested in this visual artist who then eventually started illustrating children's books. She wrote uh, We Flew Over the Bridge. She wrote Dinner at Aunt Connie's House. She did a, a beautiful um, storybook, a picture book um, about Harriet Tubman. And But it didn't dawn or click on me that would be something I would do. Mm -hmm. But then I was actually um, at work proctoring uh, a language exam, and I had been looking at manuals and policies and doing work while the students were taking these language exams, and I started with a, a pen just making these little doodles. And this little doodle in particular was of a, a machine, a little magical, whimsical machine. And then I became really involved in this machine, and I'm not even sure why, but I decided to fill an entire sketchbook uh, with these machines. They became more whimsical, and they literally almost felt like characters in the sketchbook. And then I asked this question, and this was about eight years ago, um, where did these machines come from? Like, if I were to imagine that they came from somewhere besides my own imagination, where would they have come from? And that is where the grandfather character came into being. Mm -hmm. I literally thought he was an aerospace engineer. He had been retired. He was very much into robotics, and he created this little robot named Remy. Now, Remy built the machines, but how could a machine do that. And literally from posing these questions about these magical machines, and at this point my son was about a year mm -hmm. or two years old, and so I was of course reading to him, and he enjoyed uh, me reading to him, and I began to see the power, I think, of reading and sharing stories with children in a very different way, okay. you know, outside of just reading them for my own enjoyment. And then from, from that point, I started thinking, this seems like a viable story. And I introduced Kai, named after my son, this little character who was at the time seven. Now my son is actually nine. It's been uh, a project that I've been working on for some time. But it took a very long time for me to think of the narrative, the story. I wrote a manuscript, um, which I took very serious. I sent it to an editor. And then I started doing character development. And then I had to really think about how these machines, like what was magical about them. So in the story narrative, basically, it goes from, and I started, had to think about the style. I did so many paintings and drawings to think about what it looked like. I taught myself watercolor because I really like that. But I also wanted the machines to be very graphically, like I wanted them to pop. And I knew that colored pencil could do that. So I integrated the two um, mediums in order to get this aesthetic, but then the thing that I thought about conceptually in terms of moving the story because I'm so visually based was that I started the story in gray or in black and white. And then the story basically goes, and you sort of introduced it in the beginning, is that Grandfather and Kai are spending this time together working on Remy in, in Grandfather's shop. And one day in the beginning of the book, Grandfather says, Kai, I'm almost finished with Remy, and then he can help me in my shop. Well, Kai hears this, and he goes to bed, but he be, he's very nervous. He's filled with anxiety and has this nightmare that Grandfather and Remy the robot are in a spaceship together in space. There's this dream sequence within the story. And Grandfather turns to, to Remy and says, you are my best boy. 
Well, of course, Kai wakes up and is very anxious, and he goes out into the shop, but Remy is not there. Oh, and then yeah. there's there's a, a there's a, a page in which the story there's a frame of the door and through the door you begin to see this color and that is where the Remy character who's animated now and he has life magically yeah. and then there are these machines that are musical and lyrical and they make noise and they're cuckoo clocks and they're all of these things mm -hmm. so the question then becomes for Kai you know and, and of course the reader is how this happens. And so really the story for me is sort of an origin story. It talks about how the, the machines came into being within the context of the narrative and also how Remy came to life. So uh, that's really the beginning of the story and the, sort of the, the evolution. And I actually think of this in terms of a trilogy or possible more. So it's a series. Mm -hmm. And then I imagine in, in my mind that Kai with friends and, and with others that do uh, space and time travel to explore sort of the universe, if you will, or imagination. And because, you know, there's this narrative and it's really about robotics and there are these references to science and engineering, I wanted to have a glossary for the young readers because it's really geared towards readers uh, or pre-readers also, uh, mm -hmm. children ages four to eight. So I included a glossary where I talk about what is the imagination. What is an aerospace engineer? Right. What is a chemical engineer? But then the other thing that was hugely important to me, and particularly because my son, who loves science, I wanted to introduce African-American scientists to the reader because I feel so often we do not think, we know who Einstein is, or many of us do, but often we don't think of science as being um, something that uh, people of color do necessarily, or that women do. There's this huge gap. Yes. And so I put two historical science in the back of the book with their biographies and, um, you know, trying to introduce us to this idea or this notion. Yeah. Well, I actually, it's, I'm so glad that, that you uh, brought uh, all of these, uh, you know, wonderful layers up because uh, um, I, when I read uh, your book, um, one of the things that uh, really captured my heart was certainly uh, this endearing uh, uh, closeness in relationship between mm -hmm. grandson and grandfather, which I don't yeah. think there are many books who shares and shows that and actually uh, highlights also and values the wisdom and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know lifespan of uh, you know. Uh, grandparents so that was one theme but uh, mm -hmm. the science aspect of it also was very intriguing to me and uh, very exciting because I'm a nerd <laughs> and, uh, and I, I imagine that many children will really be excited with you know uh, with with the story and in the robotics and science in itself there's so many layers of science that this book and hopefully the trilogy will bring up uh, but, uh, you know, the part that there aren't many uh, books for children that has all African-American characters, you know, and that this is as normal and as, you know, attainable uh, life and goals and dreams. And, you know, I, I just think that there is such a need for that. In, in today's world, not just in this country, but across the globe. So um, that, you know, is, is, is very special. Uh, so I wonder that, like, you know, if, if you would like to speak a little bit about uh, the intention, you know, if you thought about all of that as you were uh, um, working with this uh, project, with your book. And that we have a little minute to get an introduction to that, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll go right back with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad, Bia, and, and I'll just say, and I'll just spend a moment, but uh, that you mentioned the relationship between the uh, 
Kai and the grandfather. That was really, really important to me because I think this intergenerational relationships, we often forget about them or we don't necessarily showcase them, I think, just as a, as a culture or society. And so for me, it was really important to show a tenderness uh, between Kai and his grandfather, which is in part why there's a scene in which the grandfather, not a woman, but the grandfather is helping wash the little boy's hair in, in the bathtub, mm -hmm. like at nighttime, mm -hmm. because I wanted to show that, that men can care for children, and they do. And I wanted to show also, like you were talking about, the transference of information, that here's this man who worked at NASA, and of course the movie Hidden Figures um, was a huge, I think, uh, introduction for a lot of people in terms of the role that African American women and, and women generally had in the NASA project in the late 60s, but very early on. And and I wanted to show that as well, so that, you know, there's an image, it's, it's just hugely important because so much has happened that I think about my, my relationship with my father and me watching as a mother, my son interacts with my father, who was born in the South, you know, in the 30s, and, you know, was there in the 40s and the 50s during segregation and things of that nature. But when Grandpa is telling Kai stories, and Kai's eyes are so big, uh -huh. you know, you cannot... Uh, replace those things with video games or, you know, things like like technology, which, you know, I know a lot of people were very connected to our phones and to Facebook. I, I am certainly, and, and so is Kai, but I think these human stories and the connections that we can make and the power to me of love was just a hugely important theme for this book. Right. Let me give you a quick stop here so we can take a minute break and we were going to jump okay. right on the theme of love. <laughs> the yeah, second okay. segment. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means. Let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Welcome back to another episode of Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host Beatrice Kuntemo, and I am here with our guest, uh, Verlina Johnson. And so, Verlina, uh, before we took a break, uh, we were talking about uh, how much uh, this endearing, you know, relationship between grandparents, grandfather, and Kai. Uh, characters, you know, were so uh, important for you to share. It's not just about the magic and the creativity and the science of robotics, you know, but there's definitely this love connection. And so let's talk uh, from an author's perspective. Um, what is it about this love and this relationship that you wanted to convey through this beautiful uh, book that you just uh, uh, produced. Yeah, I think again, um, this tenderness and the book, I think in terms of from a structural perspective, you know, in the beginning, it really does open up with this anxiety of children because I think children, uh, like many of us, feel like there is a limit amount of love, that you can only love one person, or, you know, we feel sometimes that there's a competition or that there's a such thing as love lost. But in terms of unconditional love, like the love that a grandfather could have for his grandson, there is no such thing. Of course, grandparents can have many grandchildren and love them all. 
you know. And so I think, though, that developmentally, I understand that children oftentimes do fear that. So it, it started with this fear. And, and I think for me, you know, this tension, I wanted to really uh, to show that, but then I wanted to illustrate through the illustrations and, and, and the, the narratives that, in fact, there's limitless love, that there is enough love, and that literally what Remy the robot ends up doing in the end is adding something special to Kai's life. Mm -hmm. And I think so in that regard, um, he need not have felt threatened by Remy or the idea of Remy or it could have been, you know, anyone really, because his grandfather will always love him, uh, but that he was adding something. And so um, I think that was really important uh, for me. And again, I think, you know, it's this idea that, um, you know, we love people and uh, that that love is a constant and a continual kind of thing, but sometimes so certainly we need reassurance. And I think that, you know, in, in, by the end of the narrative, I think there's no doubt in, in, in Kai's mind, young mind, that his grandfather loves him and he's made a new friend. Right. So uh, it's so lovely. I really hope our viewers will, uh, you know, pick on the. Um, day that the book will be released and so uh, it will be available through Amazon so uh, tell our viewers what is the best way to check in I know that the projected date is December 15th um, yes. right so what do they need yes. to do in order to check out Kai's book yes um, there would be several several different things that one could do um, one of the things uh, is that um, you, uh, someone who is interested in the book could uh, certainly go to, I'll have a website which I'm currently is under construction and I will be launching it within the next few days, I would say 48 hours or so. And on my website, and that website address is www.v as in Victor, E-R-L-E-N-A, J-O-H-N-S-O-N dot com. So that's just my first and my last name dot com. And I'll have a link to, directly to Amazon where the, the book can be purchased. Also, I'm going to provide my email address, which uh, anyone who's interested in the book, uh, interested in learning more about the project or just would like to connect with me may do so at this email. The email is J O H N S O N V E R L E N A three three nine at gmail dot com. But the adventures of Kai and the magical machines, um, also one could with in a, in a few weeks enter that in uh, and do a Google search and it, it will come up and I'm sure would take anyone directly to Amazon and also to my website. Um, I'm expecting the uh, proof uh, from Create Space uh, actually to, to be delivered tomorrow, so I'm going to be okay. just going over that. And so the, the book really is complete. It's just uh, be, going to go under a review process um, and then it'll be uh, available uh, for purchase. So okay. I'm very, very excited. It's been uh, some time, uh, I often get up at 2.30, 3.30 in the morning to work on this project. Uh, I wanted to very... ask you a little bit of that because yeah. I have followed your process vicariously and lived a little <laughs> bit of it vicariously through Facebook and since we are yes, friends. Yes. You've been doing this for many years, I think at least yes. five, six years that I can recall, and uh, it's always been these really early awakenings, you know, like in the wee hours of the morning to do the drawings or to, you know, do the painting or to learn a new technique. So what was it like to make this commitment, you know, for this long uh, in order to get this dream come true? Yeah. Um, it, it definitely is a labor of love, but I think as a, as a creative person, what has been really important and what I've learned from this project is many things. So one of the things is, and one of the reasons that I wake up so early in the morning is that I know that my best 
mind, uh, my creative mind after rest. I'm far more fruitful and I can focus in a way. Uh, I work full time, um, actually, so I have a full time job, and, and of course, I'm also a parent. And so, mm -hmm. what I wanted to do is provide, you know, two or three good hours of work where my mind was fresh. And I know that after a long day of work and commuting in LA, et cetera, to start working at six, seven, eight o'clock in the evening, happen, I'm, just, yeah. I'm so tired. Right. And so once I, I started actually, um, you know, waking up, I felt like my productivity was just outstanding. And, and also to be perfectly honest, I wanted to make a commitment to the book and to my art where I was saying, this is really important importance to me and I'm not going to give it you know what I have left over in terms of energy and, and my focus and that kind of thing so that was really important but I think the other important thing in terms of a creative process for me to come to terms with was that this project is huge when you think of you and you've mentioned a few times the the complexity or the layers um, of the story and the narrative and so forth to work on something like that, that that's that involved, you need time. So sometimes I would be working, you know, for hours or days or perhaps weeks on something, and then I might take a break, honestly, and work on several paintings and then come back to it because some of these things, they needed uh, time, space to refresh um, and, and just to be allowed to germinate, if you will. And then I would come to it, and then other ideas would flow. Um, so just as a project, you know, even the character development alone and trying to understand these characters. And at this point, and I think other people who write screenplays and movies and, and novels and things talk about how when you begin to write a character, I felt like I was really fueling grandfather and Kai. But at this point, I feel like I know them as being separate from myself. So they're, they have a voice, you know, what would this character Kai do because he's seven years old. Right. And certainly having a son has helped me understand what a seven-year-old is like is <laughs> in so a way precious. that it wouldn't yeah. have, let's say, had I not had the son and this relationship with him. So I think some of the tenderness, honestly, and some parts of the book have evolved as I've evolved as a mother um, and as one who has this relationship with a child. For, yeah. for myself, I, I can say that. Right. Marlena, I can't believe the 30 minutes have elapsed so quickly. Uh, yeah. So thank you so very much for being here with us and to share a little uh, glimpse, a little taste of all of this love and passion and commitment uh, that you uh, have put forth for so many years for the uh, creation of Kai and the Magical Machines. Uh, actually, the adventures of Kai and the Magical Machines. Uh, I uh, wish you can come back uh, another time uh, with Kai and that we do another uh, follow-up you know, with this. I definitely uh, have more questions for you, but uh, this is hopefully will entice our viewers to check your work out and uh, to also fall in love uh, with this magic book and uh, with its many, you know, beautiful layers. Um, thank you so much. And uh, well, to our viewers, uh, thank you so much for watching us and uh, see you next time. Uh, we hope. Yes, thank you very much, Bia. Thank you so much.